Oh, without a question, Gerald Ford, he's the greatest president that ever lived. He was a Zen master. He fell down, nobody voted for him, his wife was drunk, and everybody loved him. Played football without a helmet. So I look at it this way, Socrates, Pluto, Wittgenstein, Immanuel Kant, Gerald Ford. It's simple. I have a case. It's filled with hundreds of postcards. On the back of each postcard, I've written topics. We pull these cards at random, and then we talk. What's his name and his wife bought the place? Um, uh, Kirk West. Kirk West and, yeah. and his wife bought the place. That's the first time I went to the big house. Right, so I better turn this off. Okay, I forgot I had it on, so that could be good. I can't talk Barack. <laughs> Well, let's, uh, let's dive into these cards here. Okay. This topic is pet peeves. Okay. And so... Oh, good. I want to know, what are your pet peeves? What annoys you? I really only have... Well, the music of today is horrifying. I don't understand it. I don't know what... Pe There's no melody. I don't know what they're doing. And people are paying $18,000 a ticket to see whoever that is. <laughs> well, who in particular do you just not get the well, appeal? Well, everything on the radio today. I mean, I, I, when I, you know, I don't like to say I'm an old fuddy-duddy, but I'd turn on the radio, there would be Johnny Cash, The Beatles, Stevie Wonder, The Temptations, and they'd turn on a classical station, hear Stravinsky and Bach. Everything you turn to had a quality or an integrity to it that lacks tremendously today unless you find an FM station that really knows what it's doing. Why do you think that music today isn't finding that integrity? Well, everything goes in cycles, and I feel we're at the end of a cycle, or I hope a beginning of a new one. And 1962 was the worst year of music ever, right before the Beatles and all the 60s renaissance happened. And so when it gets that bad, something, something changes. And I feel we're, you know, right on the verge of some, something new coming. It has to. It can't get any worse. I mean, there's some good music out there, but I'm talking as a mass. I mean, people don't get to hear anything, you know. You do have YouTube. You have to search. I give speeches in colleges and different places. I go and talk, and they get to ask questions. I don't have the answer for anybody, but... Uh, I just, uh, you know, I just feel so sorry for them. They think Jimi Hendrix started the blues, and they don't go any deeper than Led Zeppelin. That's like the hallmark. You know, there's these wonderful people there. Louis Armstrong, they don't have a clue who Louis Armstrong, and they're in music school. And he's possibly the greatest musician of the last century. And Miles Davis, Coltrane, Thelonious Monk, forget it. They just, that's just out the window. And I'm sitting there and I want to cry. I mean, there's 20 students, and when I was 18, I used to go and study all the time. I'd go find records, I'd go to libraries to, just to become a musicologist, to understand where everything came from. Let's go back, though, to the music of today. Okay. Who is doing it for you today? Well, there are three groups that knock me out that I think are really quality. The Campbell Brothers were phenomenal, and they don't play out of the Rochester area too much. And they're my favorites, and there's nobody better than Del McCurry. I mean, that's just, that's some heartfelt stuff. And the Queeby sisters out of Austin, Texas. Have you heard them? I have not. Unbelievable. What kind of just, music? It's leaning toward Texas swing, but it's their own thing. And then I love them, the two girls from Boston, uh, four, what do you call them, uh, four-wheel drive, uh, Lake Street Dive. Dave Rawlings, Gillian Welch, are they doing it for you? Who, Dave Wong? Dave Rawlings. Rawlings. Now, he's married to Killian Welch, I'm not right? sure if they're technically yeah, married or just... Yeah, I think they're technically married. Yeah. I, I, I know who that guy is. I know all his friends, yeah. and I've never heard him. But they really, really like him. Do you remember what the last album was that you picked up that you enjoyed? Well, you got good questions once again. The last... Oh, the... Boy, yes, I do. Uh, Srinivas, he's a mandolin player from India. I'm in love with that record. How'd you find it? Uh, he played with Miles Davis in 1990 when he was 12. When he was 12? Yeah, and I, I heard about it through a magazine, a French magazine. And I went and picked up all his records. He passed away a year ago and he was coming to play with us on tour. And I was so upset when he, this summer he was going to come and sit in. And uh, yeah, he, uh, he's a magician. 
When you go to start a band, you, are you finding the musicians first or do you have an idea first? Musicians. You say, okay, I know I want to start something with this guy and this guy and this guy, and then we'll see what the music comes to be? Right. Is that the process? Yeah. Well, we just basically, I mean, you know, we're a, a jazz band parading as a rock band. That's what I look for, somebody who can play in the idiom, bluegrass, blues, jazz, country. They can play all those idioms, the feel of every idiom. And most people, you know, will just play country music and they can't play anything else or play metal music and they can't play anything else. But I want somebody that can play everything and have a spirit and able to put joy in the room beside just playing good music. Why do you think, uh, why do you, what's lost in music now? Why is there less soul in music? There's no tone, number one. Nobody, I mean, in, in the 60s, it's just once again, I'm not an old guy. I'm just seeing the difference. It was life and death, man. I mean, you see Otis Redding, James Brown play in the 60s. It was church. It was spirituality. It was sexuality. It was politics. And it meant something. There's none of that today. None of it. I mean, you know, but the Mumford and Son is about as sexual as, you know, a brick. I mean, do they really, you know what music is? Bring joy to the room, man. Put some joy in the room. I don't hear any joy in any of it. But you'd go hear, you know, you go hear James and it was four hours long. And those musicians died every night. They couldn't even walk off stage, they were sweating so bad, man, and whoo. Well, he treated them like he treated garbage. Them bad. Well, it's so funny, I got to play with Jabbo Starks Monday night, James' drummer. And uh, we were talking about the, the day he joined James Brown. And he came to James and said, man, you're not going to find me. I'm going to find you. You find me, I'm finding you. <laughs> he said, you want me to play drums? And I mean, he fined them five bucks, but it was a tight, it was the Green Bay Packers, man. They were tight and they were, you know, they, they meant business, man. When somebody in one of your bands is having an off night and you go into a set break, do you say something or do you just sort of let, or do they know it? Sometimes, yeah, they know. If they don't know it, they don't need to be there. Sometimes. I, the, to me, there's no off night. Just repeat it three times. And then it's genius. Just, uh, I mean, there's no bad notes. Just stay in the flow of the music. Sometimes, to me, okay, I'll tell you about today. Most people play their instruments and they don't play music. They don't listen to anything around them. They're not playing music, they're playing the notes. You know, they're listening to themselves. It drives me absolutely crazy. Tell me new people, I don't know anything, I'm open. Some to, new people, you're open yeah, to some new stuff? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, like I said before, I love what Dave Rawlings is doing. Everybody says he's great. Uh, yeah, Dave Rawlings is doing it for me these days. Todd Snyder, I love. Um, Todd's, Todd's gonna be in my next film. He is, what's he's your next He's gonna film? open it. It's, uh, it's called The Day Someone's Butt Smelled a Monster. No, I was. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, right now it's called Strange Voices or Six is Now 13. Who else, uh, who else would be good to listen to that's good these days? Yeah, everybody's raving about Dave Rollins. Oh man, he, we saw him up at the Ryman and- you See anybody in the Ryman's great. People are you know, loving Jason Isbell these days. Jason's good, my wife plays him all the time. And, uh, I saw him back when 15 years ago, and he was great. John Moreland? I don't know. I know, don't know him. John Moreland is really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, There's somebody else I like. Yeah. Uh, Todd. Todd's. Todd's in the band with uh, Dave Schools. Yeah. Oh, hardworking yeah, yeah. Americans. Well, Derek Trucks. I love Derek's playing. Uh, John McLaughlin's a great one. And then I gotta mention all the guys I play with. <laughs> all the guys I play with. Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy and who those guys. So who else is good today? I mean, there's a thousand good guitarists. Who speaks? Who speaks? Who resonates to me? Ralph Towner is about my favorite. Yeah. You know, it's another obscure, wonderful musician. He might be he might be Bach. Yeah, he might be Bach. How much do you practice? every day for about three or four hours, cause I didn't for years. And I just keep my fingers nimble, just two, three, four hours. You know, I come in after whatever, and late at night when the TV's on or something. Well, walk me through a practice session. What does that look like for you? Do you just pick up the guitar and just start noodling, or is it more structured than that? Noodling. 
You know, mean with the band or? No, just on a, on a, on a Tuesday night when you're Tuesday at home night, and you uh, want to just practice a little bit. I just sit down and start noodling. Yeah, play a couple lines I know and a major scale for two hours. And as long as it has meaningless repetition, I love doing it. What's your favorite guitar that you own? Man, that's great. I got three that I love. I got a 1940 Gibson, uh, it's called a 330. And my favorite's an SG 1970 that I traded Albert Collins, uh, trading him a, he was in love with this Fender Stratocaster that had two pickups in it. And he was gonna kill my children and his children to get that guitar. He said, I'll trade you that. What am I gonna say? No, Albert, you can't have it. So, but I love that guitar much more than the Fender I had. All right, this card is kind of interesting. Um, are you an internet person? Be, just pay bills, yeah. Just to pay and, the bills? And what else? And I read stuff on it occasionally, yeah. Okay, that's what I want to know is, yeah. what are your vitals when you go? That's the card is vitals. Wow, that's what, great. Where do you go when you wake up and you maybe pull out your laptop or something? Huff, where do you go? Huff Post, see if we're still here. Or I check the AJC or CNN or see if we're alive or see what the headline is. So you check the news. And then I pay bills and uh, then I see what, what I've written down, what I have to do immediately that day, either in terms of booking or, you know, a, a logistic. Logistics take up about 20 hours a week for me. And I watch my own shop and I prefer doing it. I don't want to go to New York City and not have a hotel room or a flight and I've trusted too many people with that and I've been busted too many times. So if there's a mistake, it's on me. Do you enjoy the logistics? No, I, I <laughs> don't know. It takes a lot of time and it's a painstaking event. But I, I do them so everybody, I'll make sure, you know, I look at them 10 times, have my wife double check. Cause when you're on the road and you're four o'clock in the morning and it's snowing and you're in Buffalo, you want that hotel room to be ready. You, know? you want it there, you don't want to be yeah, driving around. No, and we've done that. Every musician has done that forever. I'm an A type who's an F type. What does that, that mean? mean? That means sometimes nothing happens. But then when I'm on, it'll be three weeks, 24 hours a day, you know? And uh, I work every day, you don't see it, but I mean, I'm on the phone four to six hours a day doing logistics. and. Well, I'm in doing a lot of movies right now. We got to hopefully making two this year. We just finished one. What it's kind called of movies? Here Comes Rusty with Fred Willard. And it'll be out in six months or so. What's your role in these movies? Uh, I'm a complete Elvis Presley drunk in Memphis 1976 dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Should we leave it there? Wonderful. You're great, sir. You smoke. There's music. That's better than any new band today.